Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our squad reaction from the provisional squad picked by Mick McCarthy today and it's also going to have a few clips from Mick McCarthy's press conference as well included. Uh, Kieran, a number of shocking uh, decisions made but at the same time I can kind of see where McCarthy's coming from with it being his first squad and stuff like that. But uh, notably, what is your... Well, I suppose we'll go through the, the, the list of names and then I'll come back to you with... Uh, yeah. Who, who's kind of shocked you there and yeah. who's not. So going through it, we have Randolph and Goal, Quivian Kelleher, um, Kieran Westwood, who's had a great um, month, I suppose you could say, at, yeah. at Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Kieran O'Hara at Macclesfield, and then Travers at Bournemouth. Um, a, a shock there? Um, I think um, I think most likely, like, do you know what I mean? The, the, the obvious person Randolph will will be starting anyway so I think regardless I'm not too shocked about the the goalkeepers because regardless by the fact that you know some of them are a couple of them are unheard of he obviously just wants them to be part of the the setup just even for even if it's only for a week just to get them the field for it you know what I mean I think most of the goalies will know that they're not going to have any involvement really at all so I'm not really too shocked about that. Like I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's all a bit like. Yeah. Um, the answer defence: Coleman, Duffy, Egan, Richard Kyo, Matt Hardy, Kevin Long, Jimmy Dunn, who spent the first half of the season on loan at Hearts and the yeah. season, and ultimately got a, a yeah. long move to Sunderland, who, who are doing quite well now. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Stevens, who's been terrific for Sheffield United, as well as John Egan, Derek Williams. And Stephen Ward, uh, Stephen Ward, a shock conclusion after the whole WhatsApp thing, and you know he seemed to be left, uh, you know, kind of out, out of the loop yeah. with under Martin O'Neill uh, because of the WhatsApp stuff. I, I imagine, but I think he was injured also as well. Would you yeah. have him back? I think Mick. I think has a clean slate with everyone. I think he just wants the strongest team possible. Um, I think he probably looks at him as a Premier League player and wants him part of the setup, and. Um, yeah, furthermore, like, uh, you know, Mick was asked about bringing other players in to the squad that would upset in reference to bringing English players over. He was asked, what, what would your thoughts in terms of disrupting the dress room? And he said, he says, he says, oh, I can tell you now, like, he says, I've no issue with stuff with that because he says the dress room would be fine with it. He said, so I think, um, I think it'd be fine. I think more so Ward. The issue was with the managers, not so much the players. Yeah. Uh, I think he was kind of having the, the players back in terms of the whole thing, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Um, the back foot, it's really hard to know because um, it's hard to know what, what way he's going to set up for his first well, game. We won't, we won't know that. To exactly. His, so his final squad, but I'm just saying from, a, yeah. from the players that are picked there... Yeah. Is a, a shock inclusions. I suppose it's more kind of shocks when you get to the midfield. Hmm. Uh, but I mean, I, I for one, I'm kind of happy to see him in an involvement as yeah. he has, you know, Premier League experience and that. And hmm. he probably be play, he is playing at a higher level than Ender Stevens. But for me right now, I'd have Ender Stevens in there ahead of him just on on his uh, on his club form. Yeah, his form. Yeah. But uh, moving into midfield anyway, and then uh, this one for me, just uh, I just. I don't think he really belongs in the squad at uh, the level he's playing. But uh, Aidan McGeady, and then you have uh, it's just I uh, just you, you you don't mean like for the club he's playing with. You mean more so just the way that he's performing in regards to that. Is that what you mean? No, I just mean the, the level he's at. I just I don't see the, like it's better players there. I don't see why he's getting a mention in there. Like oh wow, well, he's, he's he's had a few good games. But for me, he goes missing yeah. far too often and. You know, he's he's thirty plus. You know, what what realistically are are, are we going to be, you know, getting from him? Now, uh, you know, Do you okay. think he's more so experienced just for the training camp and things like that, or well, maybe? But he, like, it's it, it, again, some of these players don't get near the training camp at all. So it's just a case of it's just a token gesture of oh, you know, I, you've been acknowledged, and you know, if if this player can't make it, he'll be in, basically type of thing. That's that's what the provisional squad is, and I don't understand the reasoning behind this. Would you not wait till a closer yeah. time and just give the full squad instead of kind of just teasing the players? Like yeah. Greg Cunningham, numerous times was put in the squad and never actually got to the final squad. Mm. He said more so. He said uh, when he was asked about the the reason by, by having such a big provisional squad, he said that 
um, he's never, this is the first time he's going to be actually training the players. And he says, first of all, he wants to put all these players in the bracket for the, for the week because he wants them to all know that no one's out of the picture completely. He says, yeah. everyone, uh, he says, because if you name this full squad now, people will be like, right, he just wants nothing to do with me now, so I'm just going to continue on the way I'm going with club career. And they were not going to be expecting the call from him, you know what I mean? But he wants to let everyone know that they're in the hoop and then also to keep um, regular starters out with Martin O'Neill on their toes. I think that's what, he, that's what I got from what he was putting across at the very start of the press conference. Yeah, you know, but it, that makes sense. Yeah. At the same time, it's just like if someone can't be called up, he basically said, and I'll put it in now, um, he basically said that... I'm not leaving any doors shut for anyone, so if I didn't pick up someone, so they might think that I'm not considering them at all, so they might as well call up as many people as they can, Yeah. Uh, so they know, but get that, but I'm just saying, from this point going forward, after the squad's announced, you know, maybe we could just put an end to this provisional squad nonsense, mm -hmm. once and for all, like, it's just, I'm not a fan of it, I'd rather just know the full squad and that's it, uh, mm -hmm. rather than kind of going, oh, well, this person might be picking this, it, it would just end all the, con or not the controversy, but end all the speculation about other stuff, and it would just mm -hmm. be, it, it just... Put the bed a lot of things, I think. But anyway, I just I just feel sorry for him a little bit in terms of well, international managers in general. The mid the pressure that is on him in particular, and he's literally told us today that he hasn't even a training training session with any Irish squad. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. And Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm on, like, I, I'm on his side about that. But you know what I mean? Like, he, he kind of needs an opportunity to meet everyone and speak with them. And Do you know what I mean? And I get a feel for because there's players that were Ireland historically who um, haven't even been playing for the club or whatever, but they seem to. have Overplayed or being fantastic for for Ireland, like do you know what I mean, in terms of their, you know, the performances, they're constantly in the Irish squad. But even the club form, even if they're not doing well, they're still part of the Irish setup. Yeah. So maybe he's just trying to get a feel for that. I, I don't know. I just I just think uh, I think he's trying to just wants to give everyone an opportunity, get everyone on his side. You know. Yeah, but it's just at the end of the day, I'm just saying we should do yeah. away with the provisional squads. I'm not saying that you should be yeah, calling yeah, up yeah. people. But uh, yeah. moving on, then he and he spoke at length about um, James McCarthy and Glenn Whelan, which you can see here. And um, the recall of, of Glenn Whelan. I mean, he got a, a lot of love at the end, which I thought was going to be his, his last game for for Ireland, uh, and got a good send off. But obviously, you've been impressed enough with him, and uh, you think he may have a, a part to play for you. Well, I rang him and I asked him if he'd retired and he said, no, he hadn't. So, whether he was retired as opposed to he retired himself, I don't know. Uh, he's playing very well, yeah. Uh, he's playing with kind of Huron as well, so there's a bit of a partnership there. Uh, you probably all put this potential to be playing in the field now, but you know. But at least there is some understanding of playing together, those two. Uh, I'm not. I wonder about our squad of midfield players, about somebody who could do a specific role as a sitter. Uh, he certainly can. And whether he ends up in being in the final squad remains to be seen, of course. But I've been impressed with him, yes. Well, I can hardly imagine that you call him back into the provisional squad from. Retirement, so to speak, and then not bring him. Well, I could. I could. I might want him for a specific game at any stage. Um, and I think just knowing that he's not being he's not being forgotten about, that he's still being thought about as a player that can ever do a job in the national team. I think would he would be he'd be pleased with that. I would have thought. Word on uh, James McCarthy. Have you been following his uh, recovery? Yes, I have. Um, and I've been speaking to him, I, I spoke to him a couple of times, tried to get him, well hopefully we go out on loan at Christmas, in the January window, uh, you know, they didn't, they wouldn't let him go, he couldn't go for whatever reason, and he's not, he's not started again for a long time, so I, I think he's one of our best midfield players, but, you know, best midfield players who don't play, they're not the best midfield players, but people are playing games, so we're battling yeah, and when he is back, he could be a very important player for you, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to have him back, and I've, I've stressed that to him. Uh, even getting games... In, I, the last time I was in, I was talking about him playing in the 23s and getting some football time. Because if he, if he played two or three games in there, at least he would have had those 90 minutes. And uh, I can't stress how important that is. Very rare in my time somebody's been out of that. No, never in my back into the first team. 
they would have had to play in the reserves or the 23s uh, or the 21s or whatever it was called at the time. You need you need full power before you go back into the first team. Cheers. Thank you. What do you have to say about um, Glenn Whelan? He basically said that he hasn't he hadn't retired and he was just leaving that door open. So yeah, he, the yeah. likes of James McCarthy can't yeah. uh, play. He has someone that can come in there and sit. When, he also said that because he has a he, he has a relationship with Conor here in, in, in Aston Villa, which is that could possibly be something that yeah a partnership yeah but um, it's, yeah but like I get that and that, that makes sense but he also went at length then as well about um, Sean Maguire and Adam Brown and he mm. said he liked the, he went to watch them and he thought they were brilliant uh, them having a partnership as well so that might be something he might be looking at in terms of trying to fit them in as a midfield three yeah. with Maguire and someone else up top. But uh, we're kind of get come to the rest of that anyway. Is you've Hurahan, Brown, Harry Arthur, who's a bit of a forgotten man in that in mm. there. Uh, Glenn Whelan, who we've mentioned, Sean Williams, Robbie Brady, O'Dowd, James McLean, and Daryl Horan, a Hibbs, who's having a decent enough season mm. now. Kind of a bit, a bit stops that, but now it's he's starting to get. Uh, I thought it was funny in the press conference was someone asked him about Glenn Whelan though when he was like he's playing well. He said someone said, but has he not retired? I says, well. I rang him and said, are hey, you retired? And he was just like, no, I'm not. And then we w- went back through, obviously, his actual announcement back in August with the mayor on the 14th of August. He said, he says, he says, I'm not retiring, but I'm accepting that it's unlikely I'm going to pay much more, as if he's not going to be picked much more. So he never actually said that he was going to retire. Yeah. Like, but just everyone, presumed. everyone just presumed that he was re- retired. Like, I just thought it was funny what he said. He said, he rang him and, are you retired? No. <laughs> He had a bit of uh, quick four answers for a lot of people. I talked McCarthy yeah. today, which um, was quite funny. But uh, yeah, yeah. For, for me, that's that's it in regards to the. To, there's no real surprises there, and there's no one really that stands out to me. And goes, oh, that's exciting. It's it's anyone it's, at all? It's, no, it's no, not really. No. I'd like to see Adam Brown or Conor Horan start stepping up their game at international level, and hopefully they can. And I'd be interested to see whether they're picked or not. But when they were given the chance, they didn't really take it. And mm-hmm. you know maybe the Gibraltar game is, is one to look at for them to do that. But um, I think what's going to be really really telling is obviously each manager that comes in and has their own way that they see the, the team playing. So whether we're going to be um, with, playing with a lot of width and depth, or are we going to be mainly four four two, or it, that's going to really show what he once he feels that he can build. Put the people, crack people in in a system that he wants, or create a system around the best team that he has. That's going to really tell who's going to be in and out of the squad more. So, do yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, he seems um, to like go down as well. Yeah. So, okay. like, and the big question is: Is he going to play with two strikers? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is he going to? So, depending on that, that's going to depend on the midfield that we're going to have. Like, so that's going to be interesting. Like, yeah. Think. Well, moving on to the to the forwards because ultimately they're the goal scorers, and um, if Shane Long. Sean McGuire, Ronan Curtis, who he's been to see a few times and really likes, um, Scott Hogan, Aidan O'Brien at Millwall, David McGoldrick at Sheffield United, and H- Hogan's at, uh, there now as well. He's had to come on loan to Sheffield United. It'll be interesting to kind of see how he gets on over the next couple of weeks because they're pushing for promotion. And then you got Podrick Ammond and Jason Collins, who, you know, again, in my, in my opinion, it's a bit of a token gesture for the, for the two lads. At the end there, but yeah, I don't yeah. really see them getting into the full squad. If they do, fair play to them, but I just, I just don't see it any difference of calling Pat Huben. If you're if you're gonna call up those lads, why not call up Pat Huben? In my eyes, in, in regard that much, but uh, mm. would you would you say maybe you didn't pick Pat Huben because um, I don't know, maybe because he wasn't playing over winter. That, uh, that, that could well be it. Yeah, yeah, you know. um, but. As well, he hasn't he hasn't lit up the the league as as, as he kind of finished yeah. last season. Well, that might be another factor, but I'm just saying if you're gonna maybe include them, one have those. But I I I certainly think that he'll be looking at maybe starting Maguire or Curtis or with somebody, whether that's Shane Long or whoever. I think I think he'll be looking at. at Do you think he'll go with two? Don't know. I won't know until he picks his final squad. It'd be it'd yeah. be more of a team, but just in regards to the, the strikers he picked, there's no one really there that. He also went on and, and 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 mentioned about Patrick Bamford that he's, you know, he's been in contact with him and he wants yeah, basically. Yeah. He asked him was he still interested after he congratulated him for his goals on Friday night, and he said he was interested. So there'll be more developments in that. I'd say he'll be, I'd say he'll be more 
ready to go, paperwork filled out for mm. uh, June. And same with Will Keane, the, the paperwork wasn't filled out for that at the moment yeah. either. But it was said that he, he he could be in contention as well. So that would be another interesting one. Mm. You know, it's interesting. Ob- Obafemi might be yeah. back by then because I know he's out as well. So there'll be there'll be interesting developments. All I hope is that the guys that are put in here, Sean McGuire, Ronan Curtis, can make can get can get even just the scrappiest goal just to get them off the mark and just want to say how that feeling is going to go for Ireland and take the pressure off them a little bit because mm-hmm. other than Shane Long there and Aidan O'Brien well, like if you're looking at goal scoring other than Shane Long there there's not they, they haven't scored that many goals Aidan O'Brien get one and yeah. maybe McGoldrick uh, Shane Long is more of a striker for Ireland than he is for many club he plays for do you know what I mean yeah. so yeah. and he's also getting 30 plus now I think he's 31 mm-hmm. his last break is 31 so it's, it's another one where we're, you know, we need to start getting some of these young players in now that are coming in and scoring mm-hmm. goals for their club to start getting them scoring for their country now because yeah. uh, if a long pulls out then you kind of look at, of all the strikers that are there, you know, how many goals have they gotten last year? You'd say one, Aidan O'Brien against Poland, and that's it. Mm. So, well, you can see lack in, in options. Yeah, you, and you can see why, like, like when you look at that list there, you can see why he's 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 going out of his way to search for players with the granny rule and things like that because there's just there's, the strength and depth just isn't there like like in like we counted there there's probably maybe ten if even more Premier League players in that squad like and it'd be arguable that even some of the Championship players would be better than some of them you mm. know what I mean some positions like Anna Stevens for Ward for example yeah yeah like it's just it's not a great squad, you know what I mean? And I think he needs to, he's been brought in, he's only there for two years, so obviously his goal is just to qualify and have the best team possible for us to qualify. As he said in his interview, he says, any other manager sits there in that position, it's going to be the exact same. Um, and it's more so Stephen Kenny's job or whatever to build up whatever's going on in yeah. in youth football. But well, I thought it was interesting yeah. what he said in reply to the John O'Shea thing. Mick, um, we spoke to John O'Shea, former captain there on Monday, and he said that Bamford would be, would be a welcome addition to the squad. But he said that after that, the chasing of players um, has to stop. You know, players who might qualify through the, the so-called brand new rule. <laughs> I'll wait till he's sat in this chair, shall we? That's, I love that one. That's good. <laughs> Do you think it does have to stop? Or? It's, it's amazing how uh, people's opinions as a player and ex-player suddenly changes when you sat in the hot seat. So. I won't answer it, we'll wait and see. Just the, on the, the players that... I mean, England have done it, haven't they? So, well, as England have done it, they'll chase one of our better ones. And they took him. So, uh, it's not only it's not only us that's doing it. I think it's, 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 surely it's my job here to have the best team possible of players that qualify. And that's what I'll continue to do. Do you think maybe if somebody like that comes into the squad and some of the players who... You know, are you know Irish born and qualified? That there might be, it might cause a bit of disruption in the dressing room. Would that be a concern at all? No, at all. No, because I've been in the dressing room when when it's happened. If you remember, uh, I've actually walked into the dressing room and you know took somebody's place who was born in Ireland or played. And did he cause any consternation or any upset? I don't know. Not with me. I uh, I played in eighty eight, nineteen. Had a pretty good time, to be quite honest. And a lot of other other guys who were in that squad weren't born and bred in Ireland, and I, I've never seen any trouble with it at all. Yeah, he says it's easy for John O'Shea to come out and say we need to stop chasing players when he's not sat, sat in the manager seat. Yeah, uh, which was a good point, mm-hmm. and I thought he, he handled that question quite well because other people maybe like Mike O'Neill would have crumbled under that type of question. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, he is right in a way. He's like, if there's more yeah. players playing for Ireland. And declaring to play for Ireland, someone say it's it's not necessarily a good thing. I get that point of view. You so see, you want someone who actually wants to dedicate. Mm-hmm. But if, I'm sure if the man is meeting him, he will get a sense of whether this player, unless he's going to put on a really really good acting performance. There's so many players of that that did that when we were in probably the best times in Irish football, but they were very proud to declare for Ireland. I think that that's the problem with the Declan Rice thing. It's just that people are more upset that. He was in between two, whereas Ray Houghton always said he wanted to play for Ireland. Um, Kevin Caban, even though he grew up in England, always said he recognised himself as Irish, you know, mm. things like that. There's nothing wrong with that, I don't think, really, you know. Um, and 
it's it's one of those things. I think people, fans, have this idea in their head that um, we should just stop letting people that have grown up in England play for us, and that we'll just discover this like these like twelve like diamonds under the rock. They're, they're under there somewhere, and we'll pull them out, and we'll be able to play whatever way we want. We can pass the ball, ball like Barcelona did or something like that, and we will just develop our own players. But as Mick McCarthy just said there today, he hasn't had one training session with him yet. He's been manager since what? Since before Christmas. November. And he hasn't had one training session. Do you know what I mean? There just, there just isn't the yeah, time. For sure, he even said to you when you, you asked him the question, and he even said he hasn't adapted from, yeah. he hasn't adapted from uh, in, uh, club yeah. manager to international management yet. Yeah. And he says, as of Sunday, I will. Yeah, and how can you bring through youth players into a squad and have them play a certain way when you literally have one week with them? And then not only are you trying to develop a system and, and do these sessions, but you also have to play in that week and you have to win, like, because people are expecting them to qualify. Yeah. So you just can't do it, like, you know? Um, so that's, that was just my. Well, well okay, well, just to kind of to wrap it all up, what would you rate the squad out of 10? Provisionally. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a reaction for the actual squad uh, when, when it's announced. I think it's. Uh, right now, it's, I'd give it maybe. I'd give it a six, six or seven, because the people that were playing Georgia, uh, Georgia and Gibraltar, um, be more be able to give a better answer for the final squad because it's more so the, the Georgia game is is very very important. I think personally, I think it's our most important ones. If we're going to get hit and qualify, if we're going to get a playoff spot, we have to beat Georgia home and away. It's so important because I guarantee you, whoever finishes third will be the team that will draw with Georgia or lose them. I think. So I think maybe that I give it a six or seven now, like right. six point five. I actually forgot to put Cyrus Christie in the list, but uh, yeah. he's anyway. But for me, five out of ten, and I'm just yeah. Uh, squad's not great. It's like you know, it doesn't excite me. It's all about what you're comparing it to, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm uh, yeah. Well, we're do also doing all these yeah. Republic of Ireland all time eleven, and you see that <laughs> you're kind of like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah, excite yeah. me, but at the same time, you know. David Moyler being in there as well doesn't fill me with, with great mm-hmm. confidence mm-hmm. as well, you know. So well, again, it'll all come down to the final squad. I don't think some of the players that were a bit, you know, wild cards, you would say. Uh, I don't think they'll really be in there. And I think, mm-hmm. I think once we kind of get the final squad, I'll, I'll be a bit more optimistic and kind of what who's actually you think is going to play because I'd really like to see someone like John Egan get a chance to play in there, and I think he's deserved. And and then Stevens to really nail down this qualifying campaign, their position. So that's kind of what that would excite me more. There's someone like Sean, Sean McGuire taking his chance, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's just for, from an overall squad point of view, I just I rated five out of ten at the moment. But you know there is chance for that to improve okay. when I feel the final squad. So I don't think I'm being overly negative. I'm not. I'm yeah. just you know. There's hopefully just, don't. Yeah, hopefully Mick's not watching. You know. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on the squad in the comments and don't forget to subscribe now. We're on our way to 5k. We want to reach up for Pat St. Patrick's Day. We need, I think it's 207 after checking today. So um, please head over and if you're still watching, please go ahead and like this video. We will speak to you all soon and have a nice day.